Hi everyone, I'm just coming to talk to you really quickly because there was this article that came into my inbox and I just had to come and talk to you about it because it really got me fired up. You know that if I read something or something sparks me and I feel like you are going to take that information and run with it as truth, that I feel like it's almost like my duty to come on and like tell you, no, that's not right. They don't know what they're talking about, etc. So the article that came into my inbox was about toxic positivity and how as spiritual gurus and the self-help community, how they are, how we are, how I am perpetuating this falsehood about all these different points that I'm going to get into here in a minute that are very toxic and lend itself to only positivity without really being realistic and practical about real life. I want you to hold on to that thought because 99% of the time, the reason why people aren't successful in the things that they want to accomplish in life is because they have a limiting belief in some area or multiple limiting beliefs in a lot of different areas. And if you don't know what those are, basically what they are is you carry conditioning from cultural situations, from societal situations, and you let those then enter your psyche as things that you believe to be true and those things that you believe to be true put limits on what it is that you can achieve. And the moment that you think that self-help is promoting toxic positivity and you're going to see in a second the things that she said, if you adopt her similar beliefs, you can easily start to adopt another limiting belief that self-help and spirituality and all of these things are toxic and only being positive when, again, you are looking at a situation that could be very helpful for you from a limited perspective. So let's just get into some of the things that she discussed. And I would like it if you could comment, agree, disagree, what have you. Let's do it in a respectful way. However, what I am going to share with you may be a little bit controversial to you. But again, I feel like if you go around believing things along the same lines as this woman believes, that you're going to find that you may be one of those people that aren't getting what you want out of life. And this is just another limiting belief that you're going to pile on top of the other limiting beliefs that keep you stuck. The first thing she brought up is that if you are following a self-help teacher or a personal development coach or like me, a personal mastery coach, and we are telling you that you are not trying hard enough to make changes and you think you are, that is toxic for us to tell you that you aren't trying hard enough if you aren't getting the things that you want in life. And while I partially believe that to be true, that for some people, they do try everything to move ahead, but then they get stuck. Let me tell you one thing that you probably haven't tried that 99% of successful people tried. And so if you say you tried everything and you're stuck, have you tried a coach? Have you tried therapy? Have you tried getting help with your issue? Usually from your limited subjective viewpoint, the things that you try have a ceiling and have a limit on them, especially if you are the one that is actually living in the situation. And so, yes, you may have tried everything that you could do by yourself, but oftentimes people don't try help. I know for my clients, they will wait until the last minute until they have suffered for so long before they come and get help. And feeling like they've tried everything. And then the minute that they start to get help from me, they start to make breakthroughs immediately. And it's because you haven't tried everything if you haven't tried to get help. And it's not half ass help. And it's not, I'm going to help, go get help. But I'm not going to tell my whole story or be vulnerable. This is you showing up 100% in a collaboration, a partnership with somebody that is invested in you and wants to see you move forward and wants to see you be successful. So if you have not tried that, then you have not tried everything. So no, you are not trying hard enough. And I know that sucks to hear. And I know that a lot of you may be angry with me when you listen to this, but you haven't tried everything. The second thing that I see a lot of is that you may think that you're trying everything, 
but you're trying everything in one category. I talk a lot about a sweet spot that you have to work within if you want to create success in your life through actions, which are limited. Actions are only about 20% of the success that you're going to achieve. The rest is a whole bunch of other different things um, like energy manipulation, etc. However, that's another story. There's passive action and there's active action. And usually when people come to me, they've done a lot of things in the passive category, but not so many things in the active category, or it can be vice versa. And so you have to find that sweet spot in order for you to achieve the things that you want to achieve out of life. So not only could you not have been trying everything, even if you feel like you have, but you also may be trying a lot of the wrong things or trying them in the wrong way because you don't understand how energy works, how life works, how manifestation works, or you don't understand that there's different ways that you can do things and there's a sweet spot on how to do them. So if you believe what she says when she says that it's toxic for us to say that you have tried everything and um, we're being hard on you, until you can say with 100% truth that you have tried everything, then you haven't tried everything. And so if you aren't getting the results that you want, it's not mean for me to come to you and say, no, you haven't tried everything. Here's this, 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 and these are some ways that you can do it so that it can be effective for you. The number two thing she brought up was when she said that it was toxic positivity for people like me to tell you that you are 100% responsible for your own circumstances. There are extreme cases in this world. I'm not going to get into a debate about those, but what I do want to bring up is that if you are listening to me right now, you are probably not one of those extreme cases. So let's just put that aside for a moment and let's just pretend like we basic regular folk (laughs) in this world that are privileged enough to have an internet connection, a phone, what have you, a job, what have you. I don't know. You kind of are 100% responsible for your circumstances in life. And it's not because of things that happen to you. It's because of the way that you respond to the things that happen to you. People can do whatever they want to do. You do not have control over that. Things are going to happen that you don't have control over. But the one thing that you do have 100% control over is yourself. And you have 100% control over the way that you respond to almost everything in life. And because you are in control over how you respond, you are in control of your reaction. So therefore... Your circumstances are the result and the outcome of a whole bunch of different things that come together, um, be it in a relationship or be it in an event that takes place in your life. And so the, the culmination may not be up to you, but the end result and the outcome is due to how you respond to that, how you let that affect your life, how you decide that things are going to impact you, how you bounce back from adversity or how you respond in um, heartbreak or disappointments or things like that. Those are within your control. When somebody tells you that you're 100% responsible for the circumstances in your life, they aren't saying that there isn't oppression that happens in the world, and they aren't saying that there aren't bad things that happen in this world. But the reason that I teach you that you can only focus on yourself changing yourself and by controlling yourself, you're able to shift the energy in your outer world. And number two, you make change from the inside out. And I don't know if you would believe this until you tried it because a lot of people spend a lot of time, you probably spend a lot of time pushing up against relationships and circumstances that are less than desirable in your life when If you really learn how to truly make the changes that you need to make, and if you truly learn how to manipulate energy so that you could change your physical reality, you would find that, again, you have more power than you think that you do. She also mentioned that it is toxic for me to teach you that your ego is an enemy that needs to be eliminated. And I think once again, she's coming from a place of misunderstanding because 
when I specifically teach about ego, I don't teach that the ego needs to be eliminated. There's a time and a place for everything and the universe and the laws of the universe all work off balance. So while you do have a physical container and you do have a purpose as a unique individual in this lifetime, which would be your ego, you are not to be defined by your ego in the way that we do it in modern society, meaning what do you do? Who are you with? What do you own? All of the things. Those can be stripped away at any moment. And when I'm helping somebody that is going through trauma, it's usually because of some sort of ego-driven source of identity has been disrupted or taken away from them and now they find themselves in a place where they don't know who they are anymore or they feel upheaval they feel traumatic and they feel like they need help she's misunderstanding the concept of eliminating your ego but from our modern society i think what i'm saying when i tell you that you should eliminate ego is that you should not put as much value on ego driven things and since as humans we tend to be egocentric in that way the words eliminate ego are used because that's how you would understand ego the way i talk to you about ego also a level of self-importance does need to be eliminated which is another way that ego can be talked about in self-help true interdependence and true love and compassion and grace for other human beings means that you're not on a different level than anybody else. And so ego in that sense means that you have a level of self-importance and a level of identifying yourself and other people in different ways based on these outer identities that we create for ourselves. But in the spiritual community, we are souls that are inhabiting a body. So in that case, ego should be eliminated in the sense that we define it as humans, as a majority. We'll put it that way. Moving on. <laughs> Her next point was reacting with anger is a sign that you need to do more work. And that if I was to tell you when you were angry that you have work to do, especially if it's based on a personal attack or a social injustice, then I am in the wrong for telling you you have more work to do. Again, misunderstanding the whole point. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this can be a little bit touchy, especially with the current events going on. But the way you react to anger could be a sign that you need to do more work. And reacting is much different than responding. So that's the key word here. Whenever you are in a reactionary mode and it's not a life or death situation, you are usually acting off of your lower brain, which is impulsive and instinctive, rather than coming from a place of your higher self. But for me to tell you that is spiritual gaslighting. And I'm going to tell you why it's not. Anger is a natural human response. There are going to be many times in our life where we all respond to different things in our life. React, I'm going to say react, react or respond to different things in our life with anger. Um, so I'm not saying that that in of itself means that you need more work, but most often anger is accompanied with an intention of retaliation and payback, and it is not wholly constructively expressed, and it can usually also be expressed after a period of long repression, which is also unhealthy. It usually comes out toxic and when it's coming from those intentions although you may mean well or although you may think you may be angry about something that is justifiable and rightfully so you may the way that you express it and how you express it and when you express it means that you typically have a lot of work to do because typically what humans do is they repress it and then they blow up or they want to retaliate or they want to have payback, or they want to shut down, or they want to cut you off, all of which are not healthy ways to express anger. And so, yes, you probably need to do more work. Healthy anger is experienced by observation, by expressing, by being assertive, 
and by the uh, true exploratory process between yourself and maybe another person or maybe another circumstance. And it also involves compassion, forgiveness, and it promotes other healthy interactions if you are responding via anger rather than reacting via anger. She mentioned that it was toxic to say that meditation is a purely beneficial experience. And some people, when they try to meditate in a certain way, will find that that brings up trauma for them. You may feel like this. However, what she's failing again to realize from her limited perspective is that there are many different ways to meditate. And meditation doesn't have to be sitting quietly in your thoughts. Meditation can just be self-reflection. It can be done actively. It can be done while you're exercising. It can be done in a multitude of different ways while you're listening to music. I don't know any time in life where it's not healthy to your evolutionary process to take some time to yourself to be purposefully self-reflective, whatever that means for you, to be contemplative, whatever that means for you. But to tell people that meditation on a whole doesn't work for everyone. That is not true. People just maybe haven't found the right way to meditate that is in alignment with who they are. Um, almost a year ago, I did a class on meditation just for beginners, like the benefits of meditation, how it impacts your body, how it impacts your psychology. And not only that, but I also talked about some of these different forms of meditation. I don't ever want you to think that you have to do something a certain way. That is not what I teach. That is not what I preach. But again, meditation in some form or fashion is purely beneficial, even if it may sometimes not feel that way. She also mentioned that people that experience trauma and go and meditate and they focus only on that trauma, how that can be even more traumatic. That's totally true. But in meditation, nobody told you that you had to go sit and think about your traumas in meditation. Again, meditation is this contemplative, self-reflective, quiet time with yourself or solitude with yourself in order to connect to the divine or also in order to connect more to yourself or just even to take a break from all the noise that's going on in the world. So meditation is beneficial if, again, you know what you're doing. I lost track of the points, but there's two more points that we're going to go through and then we'll wrap this up. Her other point in this article was that it's toxic for me to tell you that if you control your thoughts, you're able to manifest your reality. And she said, positive thinking can feel empowering, but at the end of the day, is a positive mindset really necessary in order to get the things that you want out of life? And also, if you tell somebody to just think about things and that's how you control reality, is that also discounting the fact that there's some hard work that takes place and maybe it's only hard work that makes things happen. Again, she doesn't understand what she's talking about. You guys, this new phrase, toxic positivity, watch out for it because it's just going to make you adopt more limiting beliefs or it gives you a sense of comfort because it aligns with the fact that you're not getting what you want out of life. And I'm going to push back. You guys know I'm tough love. It means 99% of the time, no, you don't understand what's going on and you're not doing it right. When you need to control your thoughts to control your reality, nobody ever said that you don't have to do any work. That's dumb. Nobody can just lay on a couch and just manifest the whole world the way that we want the world to be. If that was the case, we would all be doing that. So Yes, there is a level of action that needs to happen in order to manifest your desires. So there's action that takes place. However, yes, a lot of manifestation is around thoughts. The first reason is because limiting beliefs. If you only believe that you can make $30,000 and you don't believe that you're worthy of making $100,000, that makes it even less likely that you're going to get the $100,000 no matter how much you try to fake, positive, think yourself into a $100,000 mindset. So that is how thoughts control reality, number one. Your limiting beliefs put a ceiling on your potential. Number two, thoughts control reality because if you just think about 
if you want to create a statue, in order to create it, you have to think about it before you can make it. So thoughts do control reality because you have to have a vision of what it is that you want to manifest in the physical in order for it to even become a physical thing. You don't just chisel away at something and it becomes a statue without even thinking about it. So that's number two. And those are just two simplistic things that I'm going to leave you with. However, no, you don't always have to be positive to make things happen in your life, but your overall trend and your overall belief system and your overall conviction on your beliefs need to be grounded in the fact that you do believe in the things that you want to manifest. And if you have any doubts and if you don't believe that you can do it and you don't know how manifestation truly works, then you're going to think that that is BS when you hear people say thoughts control reality. If that's what you think, you probably, again, don't understand how energy works, how manifestation works, and how powerful your thoughts are. So again, you're giving your power away to a limiting belief by believing that. All right, long one. And the last one. She said that for a personal mastery coach like me to tell you to rise above your emotions and tell you that's a sign of emotional maturity that I'm being toxic and I'm promoting toxic positivity. Her explanation for this was to say that true spirituality doesn't mean controlling your internal experiences and it means experiencing the world around you and having more questions than answers. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. And for that one, we're going to just go back and we're going to go to the literal definition of spirituality. Just go look it up in the dictionary. That way, I don't have my opinion about it. You don't have your opinion about it. We just take something as objective as we can, a dictionary, which is usually meaning that we have we believe in something bigger than what we are experiencing on the day to day. So while our material experiences play a part in our spirituality, a true spiritual experience does transcend the material world. And so if you are rising above your emotions, especially if you're responding or reacting to something that is happening in your mundane everyday life and you recognize that there's a bigger purpose or you recognize there's a bigger power at play, then rising above your emotions is a sign of spiritual maturity. You know that there's something bigger at play. You know that what you may be seeing and experiencing on the day-to-day -day is not true reality. You know that it's a small part of a bigger vision for your life. That is a sign of spiritual maturity. That's the very definition of spiritual maturity. Spirituality is a very internal experience because it usually starts there and then it moves out. It moves through you. It connects through you. You connect with it through you. The external things that you experience in your day-to-day -day just help facilitate your spiritual growth in some way. But true spirituality is connected to something that is otherworldly and if you can't rise above your emotions, meaning that you let them control you in situations that are mundane everyday experiences, you are kind of falling out of the literal realm, literal realm of spirituality and moving into something where you are connected to something more everyday, more mundane and more material. Again, it doesn't mean that we don't do that as humans. It's totally normal. But... When you are able to rise above that, you are living life from your higher self and you are developing a sense of spiritual maturity by not being impacted by the ups and downs of your external world upon which is not of the otherworldly, not of the spiritual realm in the literal sense. <laughs> so I hope that this makes sense. I hope that this inspires you that the next time that you hear somebody trying to give you permission to give your power away or to not try harder or to not get help or to not dig deeper, that you think about how that applies to your own life. And if you tend to be somebody that is reactive, 
that does get angry. And from that anger, no matter if it's justified, your intentions to lash out of that anger are equally negative or vindictive or you are blowing up because you are unable to express your anger and so you've repressed it for a while, which are all parts of the human experience, but they may not be linked to your best self or spirituality or your higher self. Or you find that you are having an excuse to not take time to yourself to contemplate or to be self-reflective. If you're finding that toxic positivity term to give you an out, from you doing the work and getting the help that you need, then I'm going to try to pull you back in and tell you, you have more control over your life than you think you do. And it's not toxic if other people are able to connect with that experience and with that power and manifest the things that they want. And it is because they're not as impacted by external factors or that they have learn how to respond differently to injustices and heartaches in order to move energy in a different direction. And to never forget this as well, in order to make anything better in your outside world, in order to enact true change, it starts from within. All major People, spiritual gurus say this, you need to be the change that you want to see in the world. And oftentimes people don't want to do that work. They want to be distracted by every situation externally, every cause, changing their mom, their boyfriend, their kids, their job, all of the things, instead of stopping to really do that hard work that is necessary, which is your internal work in order for you to see the things that you want to see materialize. So watch out for that toxic positivity term, and I will talk to you later.